Well, hello there and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and our in-depth series looking at the levels command. So far we've looked at the auto commands, how the RGB color space displays color, and we've also made a start to understanding the histogram. In this tutorial we'll be taking a more focused look at the histogram, as well as looking at terms such as shadows, midtones, and highlights. Okay, let's crack on. I'm going to maximize this image entitled the tonal range, and from here I'm going to hit Control L on the PC, that's Command L on the Mac, to open up the Levels dialog box. And I'm just going to position that in a convenient part of the screen so we can see both the histogram and the photograph in the background. Now I want to introduce you firstly to the tonal range of our photograph. And the tonal range is the area of the histogram that contains most of the brightness values. So you can see that although we've got two noticeable peaks inside this particular photograph, we've also got a lot of brightness values lingering inside every part of the histogram. And I'd say this photograph has a very broad tonal range. So let's take everything we know about the histogram so far and put more sense to it all. You may remember in the previous video we looked at the black, white and mid-tone sliders. When we're looking at photographs here inside the histogram, we generally interpret these values as shadows, which are the blacks, mid-tones, which is the grey value, the gamma value, and the highlights, which is the white point slider. So the darkest colours inside the image make up the shadows. The lightest colours inside the image make up the highlights, and in the middle here we have what we refer to as the mid-tones of the image. All three of these points inside the image can be directly adjusted by using the sliders that control the shadows, highlights and mid-tones. And by the way, there isn't really any kind of definition as to where the shadows end and the mid-tones begin, or the mid-tones end and the highlights begin. And that's because every image is different, so depending on what image you're actually working on, the mid-tones, the shadows and the highlights, you may interpret them as different values or starting or ending at different locations within the histogram. Okay, in addition to that, we can also affect the image on a channel by channel basis. Now, if you remember what we said about color inside the last video, we have three channels here inside the RGB color space and you'll find all three of them by exploring this channel's drop-down menu. Now remember what we said about each channel being read by Photoshop as its own grayscale image? Well the histogram reflects that just like the channel's palette did. I'm going to go ahead and switch this out to the red channel and now this histogram is just showing us the brightness values of each pixel inside the red channel. Now remember inside the channel's palette where we had areas of black, we had no colour at all for that particular channel. Well, the same is true here inside the histogram. So the black point slider represents all the pixels inside this image that have no values of red whatsoever. As we move to the right, we increase the brightness of the red until we get to the white point slider where we have the brightest red possible. And you can see from the histogram that we have a lot of subtle reds and then as we get brighter they get fewer until they seem to explode just about here and at this stage we're dealing with some pretty intense reds okay I'm going to cancel out of here and then just open up this image entitled Lincoln low contrast which is in fact a very low contrast photograph of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington DC I'm gonna hit control L on the PC or command L on the Mac to open up the levels dialog box and you can see first and foremost that this image has a more narrow tonal range. By far the majority of the brightness values inside this photograph are in the mid-tone region. And you can see that we've got practically no shadows and no highlights in this photograph. And as a result we get a very low contrast image. You might also refer to this photograph as being very washed out. as a fairly well used term as well. So just to confirm that contrast, this is a perfect example of a low contrast image. We have no shadows, no highlights, and just a clump of brightness values inside the mid-tone area of the histogram, meaning that we don't have a good variation or a good stretch of brightness values ranging from black to white. Okay, I'm going to hit the council button, and then I'll bring up another photograph entitled Canadian Bridge 
high contrast. I'm going to bring up the levels command by once again hitting Control L here on the PC. That's Command L on the Mac. Now I'm going to move the levels dialog box over here to the bottom so we can evaluate the difference between the shadows which are extremely dark and the highlights which are super white. You'll also notice that if you look at the histogram that we get very few midtones. The main bulk of the image is present in the highlights and shadows area of the histogram making for a very high contrast photograph. Ok I'm going to cancel out of levels here and then open up another photograph, this time entitled Niagara Falls High Key. Then I'm going to open up levels once again by hitting Control or Command L. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just reposition the dialog box back over to the right hand side here. Now before we talk about what high key actually means, let's talk just for a few seconds on the shape of the histogram generally. In fact I lied, it's going to be a few minutes. Anyway, there's really no particular guide as to what the perfect histogram should look like. I can tell you that in the majority of cases you'll want it to appear smooth and that you'll want to avoid clusters of single pixel spikes but in this wide world of photography and indeed the wide world of Photoshop the way you want the image to ultimately look will define the histogram not the other way round. And what I mean by that is perfectly illustrated inside this image. We have very 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 few shadows and we have an abundance of light colours so an image that's very bright but with very little contrast. Now in a lot of images this won't work but when you're taking pictures of Niagara Falls in the peak of winter you don't really want any shadows inside the image you're only wanting to see the bright almost white details inside this photograph. Now if you're taking a picture like this and you've got your camera set to automatic exposure then chances are that the image won't come out too well. And the reason for that is when the camera is set to automatic it's automatically trying to balance the brightness values inside the image. So it's looking to distribute the shadows, highlights and midtones evenly or as evenly as it can to produce a well exposed photograph. So when you take a photograph such as this with the auto mode on then the camera is going to try to balance the photograph so it's going to try to produce darker colours than there really are. I mean there are no dark colours inside this image but your camera will try to find them and if it can't find them then it will shift the balance of colour into the shadow region more than it needs to. You'll find some digital cameras, especially the low range point to shoot ones have a number of different presets to help with exposure and one of them is generally a little snow icon or something like that that tells the sensor that the reason it's picking up masses of light is because the way the scenery really is. The camera can then adjust the exposure based on that information. Anyhow this image was actually taken in the auto mode would you believe after saying all that and as a result it came out a lot darker than you're seeing now and I've managed to lighten things up with a quick play inside the levels command but I just wanted to give you this as an example. Ok so we can evaluate from this image that we have what we'd refer to as a high key image meaning that the tonal range which is this area here falls predominantly in the highlights of the histogram. I'm going to hit the escape key to cancel out of here and I'm going to open up another image this time called NYC low key. This is a photograph I took a few months ago from the Empire State Building in New York City looking at the high rise buildings at lower Manhattan just in case you wanted to know and I'm going to enter the levels dialog box by hitting once again control or command L on the keyboard and now you can see this time we have a low key image meaning that the majority of the brightness values are inside the shadows of the image and once again that isn't something we'd want to change dramatically inside levels because we want this photograph to reside primarily in the shadows of the histogram because that's where they belong. So just another example of the histogram inside a night shot of New York City. Ok I want to introduce you to one more word or one more term I should say here inside of Photoshop and that word is clipping. A very unwelcome word here in the world of photography and also image editing in general. I'm going to hit the escape key to cancel out of here and then I'm going to hit control tab that's command tab on the Mac until I get back to the Canadian bridge high contrast image. 
and I'm going to hit Control or Command L to open levels and I'm going to bring the white point slider down to 225 so we're really brightening up the image I'm also going to increase the black point slider to 30 to make the shadows darker so we've made the shadows darker, the highlights lighter adding more contrast to this already ultra high contrast image now I'm going to hit OK to accept these changes and I'm going to hit I on the keyboard to access the eyedropper tool and then I'm going to open up and drag out the info palette and I want you to keep an eye on the RGB values over here as I drag the eyedropper tool around inside the image. Now I'm going to zoom into some of this snow by hitting Control spacebar on the PC or Command spacebar on the Mac and I'm going to hover the eyedropper tool above some of these pixels and you can hopefully see that in the info palette that we're hitting pure white which is a value of 255 in each of the RGB channels this is referred to as a clipped highlight or blown highlights because any detail that we had inside the snow is gone and if this was an image we just opened or a photograph we would just taken then there wouldn't be any way of actually bringing back those details I'm going to zoom out a touch by using the Control alt spacebar combination here on the PC or the Command-Option spacebar combination on the Mac. Then I'm going to zoom back into the shadows of this image. Just about in this area here, we should be seeing a dark plantation of trees. I'm going to once again check out the values of the pixels inside the image with aid of the info palette and the eyedropper tool. And this time we're seeing a value of zero in all three of the color channels and we all know what that is indicating we now have pure black representing large parts of the shadow detail meaning that we have clipped shadows or blown shadows if you prefer once again if I zoom out our mission is to avoid seeing this kind of mutilation of an image because that's what it amounts to basically we're replacing good crisp detail that existed in the shadows and highlights area of the histogram and the shadows and highlights of the image and we're replacing those crisp details with just pure black and pure white which is really going to serve no purpose at all well hopefully you now have a much better idea of what the histogram is what it's used for and indeed how to read it coming up in the next video we're going to start adjusting some of our images with the levels command once again thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com I'll see you in the next video.